passionate about music. So who inspired you to sing as you're growing up as a kid? Um, who gave you that oomph to, to fire you up to, to get into the music industry? I think it was something that I wanted to do and it was more a case of nobody stopped me. Because in my family, it was just, you, you know, you, you kind of did what you wanted, really. You just got on with it. And so it wasn't that people saying, you're amazing. You should be good. You know, I didn't have that. But then I didn't have someone saying, shut up, stop that racket. It was just kind of, I mean, my mum always liked pop music. She always had the radio on. And we always used to listen to the top 40 on her Roberts radio. When you look at the other female singers, are you critical of them? Because obviously you know how it feels to be up on stage and, and being a woman in music as well, does that...? Well, for years I used... I was part of the, the Singers Club in London. I was the fourth person ever to host it and I was involved heavily with it for years. And there you would see maybe up to 30 singers in one night from big stars like Seal and Alita Adams and Justin Brown to all the backing singers who are on everybody's records but nobody knows who they are, who are great singers, but they'd have it like as a, a platform to perform, to people who'd never got up and sung ever, and it was their first time ever. So that, that was really, really good to see that every week and to see what worked, what didn't work, to see how the professionals did it and to see why, you know, those people were as big as they are because you know, they knew what they were doing. How did it feel to release your first track, your very first single? Um, that was in 1990 and it was, I used to be called Catherine Wood and uh, it was Don't Dream It's Over by Less Stress featuring Catherine Wood. <laughs> and uh, we made a video on the beach and um, it was very exciting because it was the first time, I was on MTV, my video was on all the time and uh, I was being recognised on the bus yeah. and things. And I remember hearing it coming out of a shop in Brighton on a Sunday when some builders were doing something in the shop. And it was on the radio. And I was just, that's me, that is. That's me on the radio. And of course, everyone just thinks you're mad. Like, <laughs> Do you still get that now, though, when you're releasing tracks now? Or is it because you've been doing it so long, it's become almost a bit, not ordinary, but you're, you're used to that now? It's not as Well, exciting. I am used to hearing myself yeah. and... Do you like to hear yourself? Yeah, I do. You no, do. it's always a thrill. I mean, it's, you know, it's great. It's great. A great job. Yeah. Do women ever hit on you when you're out at clubs doing performances? They like, have the done. following is I huge. don't know if you'd call it a hit on. What am I allowed to say on this interview? <laughs> say what you want. <laughs> well, there was one occasion <laughs> um, when I was singing in the back bar. I don't know what it's called now around the corner here somewhere in Old Compton Street and, um, and, a, and a rather ardent lady decided that she was going to grab the diva's nethers <laughs> with a, you know, quite a sort of... Firm grip. Yeah, and I just thought, actually, you know, that's a, out of order mm. because I don't know you and it's just a bit rude. <laughs> and everyone was all up close and personal because the stage was only that high. So I thought, how can I get rid of her without anyone else knowing and carry on singing? Because as you know, the show must go on. Yeah, yeah. So I grabbed hold of her appendage that happened to be sick and I squeezed it and twisted it round like that. <laughs> Very discreetly That got fine. rid of her. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're playing the Go Go Festival, aren't you, as well? But I have so. a cool, you know, of course I love attention and everything, but just don't, you know, just don't overstep the mark. <laughs> you're not going to get that kind of attention at the Go Go Festival. I mean, this is the lesbian event that's coming up that you're playing. With no, I, I mean, I'm assuming because it's a festival, I'll be up on a big stage, so they won't be able to yeah, touch me anyway. Yeah. Touch me on my body. Has that made you more wary of the more intimate gig, though? No, not at all, no. I mean, there should, it, it depends. I have, you know, like every performer, I've had some unpleasant experiences on stage. I had one um, quite recently, actually, going with Amanda Wilson on a cruise. Sounds glamorous, doesn't it? From Newcastle to Amsterdam. <laughs> and these people were basically just drinking for three days. Amanda did her show that I went out on stage and this girl was there. And she lunged forward, and I had this dress with, which has got, thank God, quite heavy padding in the bust area. She lunged forward and latched on 
pit bull style with her teeth to my tit. <laughs> <laughs> Just went, hung. And it, I tell you, it was absolute agony, and I was, I was crying inside. But again, you're thinking, no one knows this is happening except me and this other person who's doing it who probably doesn't really know what they're doing and a couple of other people. So it's like, again, how can I... I'm in agony, but I've got to keep singing and I've got to get rid of this person. Uh, Catherine, it's a joy as always <laughs> to see you and you're going to perform for us as well. An exclusive I am, session, yes. A low profile down says, wish you all the success for the next Thank year. Thank you. And we'll see you again. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Passionate about music. 